So I'll, uh, I'll open it up this week. Obviously, you guys kind of have obviously heard what transpired uh, last Friday night. Kind of want to give you guys shed some light. I mean, first and foremost, appreciate all you guys covering me on a weekly basis. Uh, not jumping out into any wild conclusions, anything like that, like like some other people do. So first and foremost, with you guys, I do appreciate that. Um, pretty much, uh, my mom was in town over the course of this past week. Ended up going to dinner with um, my mother and my roommate. Um, as I got back to my apartment later that night, um, my apartment um, where you go up is located in the lobby of a hotel as well. Um, and as I was waiting for my elevator, I was approached by what has been made out to be um, a fan. And at the time, uh, this point in the night, um, this was a very um, intoxicated, very aggressive person that approached me in the lobby, um, putting his hands on me, kind of uh, toying with me uh, as, as, as I got back, just kind of trying to mind my own business and, and get upstairs in my room. Essentially, this is the front door of my home uh, downstairs. And as that, this, this man kept uh, attempting to come at me, just be extremely aggressive, um, and, and as we tried to coax him into getting into his elevator and going on about the night, um, the guy got very aggressive and, and, and luckily for us, I obviously don't want to go into a lot of detail about everything that happened because it all did happen um, so fast and, and security was able to get, thing, get things under wraps, um, which very thankful for that as well, but um, came at my roommate. Um, there is no entourage with me. I live with, with one other person um, and my mother was upstairs, so it was about as much an entourage as you get being with my mom. Um, and, and as it, as, as it uh, escalated and got a little bit out of control, um, security got things under wraps and I was able to get upstairs and make it into my room, luckily. So um, I'm approached by fans every single day. And uh, in Cleveland, there's, there's nothing I love more than when somebody comes up and talks to me about the history of the Browns or, or how much, how passionate they are about this team and about this locker room. And for me, um, I treat every, every fan the same um, with a lot of respect and I'm very thankful for them being the fans that they are. I don't think our league um, would be that without them. So um, it was a very unfortunate situation, a situation that was tried um, to be averted at, at all cost and one that was unfortunately um, not able to, to really get away from. And, and hopefully now that, we've, now that we've gone through something like this and it is the way it is and it was portrayed the way it was, um, I know me knowing the truth and knowing what went on and what I told Ray Farmer and, and Coach Petten the next day, first thing um, in the morning as soon as I woke up, um, I let those guys know what really happened and wanted them to be on top of it from the very get-go. So um, I'm very thankful for the Browns having my back in all this and, and at the same time supporting me um, on a situation that seemed to be um, a little blown out of proportion, let's say. Danny, uh, Ray Farmer said in his statement the part that he was upset about was that, that you were out at 2.30 in the morning. Sure. Um, so what do you think of him saying that? First? Yeah, for me, I, I feel um, since I've been here, my lifestyle has changed. Um, dramatically. I think um, me, I'm usually usually in my home, not venturing out um, very much, and I don't don't get a lot of time uh, to go out and, and see much of Cleveland. So um, one night that I did get a chance to go out and did stay out a little later on a decision that I made on my own, um, I felt at the time was, was okay. And um, I know there's other guys around the league and other guys in this locker room that um, do the same thing and enjoy their time when they're out of the building. And I know that um, at night when I go to bed, I need to make sure that I'm ready and, and capable of going to work the next day and fulfilling my job to to the duties that I have being in this building the next day. And um, the, the guy, the, the Chris Gonos guy said that, that someone smashed, smashed, smashed your face. Sure. Can you, I mean, it obviously. Well, you guys obviously see me daily. Um, Monday, I saw you guys. Sunday, I see you guys at the game. Yeah. I'm on TV, so I'm not exactly a person that, uh, it's not going to have a camera on them or not going to be seen walking around here throughout the week. So um, if you guys would have seen anything that was wrong with me and I got my face smashed, 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 I think you guys would have noticed. So um, that, I think that's just m one of the many untruths and, and kind of things that's got um, blown around a little bit through with the story. So and just he to clarify, he, did, did, you, did anybody hit you in, in the, you know, the as, face? As far as going, it, it all happened so fast and, and, and I don't want to get into a ton of the details, but um, I mean, you guys can see my face and, and see that I'm completely fine and have been, whether it was the day after um, this happened on, on Sunday or even Monday walking in the locker room. And then he, he also said, said that he sucker that you punched his brother. Did, did you punch anybody? Yeah, I'm not going to go into exact details of everything that happened. Like I said, um, it was broken up really fast. And at the time, um, it was more towards my roommate than it, than it was towards me at the initial um, 
the initial offering, I guess. How many were there? A bunch of them. I mean, how many of them were there? No, there was people in the lobby. Um, so I can't really put a finger on how many people were down there because, like I said, this to me is the front door of my house. So as I get to this um, elevator and put my key card to go upstairs, this is essentially home for me. So yeah. um, I wasn't really keeping a huge awareness of my surroundings and. Um, to see how many, but there was it was a crowded lobby coming off a, a Friday night in a hotel. Did you have to tell this story to police, or did they not? Uh, I, did, I did not have any. My name, I think, throughout all of this was just mentioned in the police report. I have not been talked to or, or anything like that, and I, I'm not in any trouble. So. Do you think that Dana will press press charge? Will you or Dana press any charges? Nobody, against nobody, them? If, nobody from my end is doing anything um, with um, legally wise as far as that goes. Hey, John, are you, are you almost? The police report indicated that they noticed there were security cameras in the vicinity and the incident was most likely caught on tape. Are you almost thankful that the incident was caught on tape so that there's video evidence to support everything that you've said? Sure, if that's the case then, I mean obviously I haven't seen anything like that or um, heard much or really thought much into it because after after this kind of broke and after um, I saw how it was reported and how the news was, it was kind of something that took me back and I was really shocked that it came out this way. So I just kind of went into more of a hiding after that and wanted to be able to come here today and address you guys and give my side of the story. So that's what I wanted to do more than anything else. The fact that they were sort of characterizing it as a riot, is sure. that totally blown out of proportion? No, like I said, after... Um, Going going into the details, it all happened so. I mean, it was it was so quick and it was it was it ended so abrupt as well. I don't know if that's, I don't know how you would really characterize that because, um, like I said, I kind of let my guard down once I once I get um, to this building and get um, with other security guards around and, and feel like I'm home. Um, so I kind of I guess on my own end messed up. I kind of let my guard down a little more than I normally would. So what did you learn from this incident then? You know, I, I, I feel, um, and, and I told my mom this as soon as I got upstairs, um, this, this wasn't like anything that's happened to me in the past before, maybe when I was um, a freshman or back in the past when I had any type of, of scuffle. This was something that was tried to handle in the most professional way that we could, tried to just, um, the, the big holdup was um, on these elevators going up to the higher floors, um, you ride in the elevator with somebody. So we were essentially going to be riding in this elevator um, with this other man, and mm -hmm. after he had, had there had been some aggressiveness and hostility um, in the lobby, we didn't want to exit or enter the elevator with this guy. So um, there was kind of a, a, a brief pause in trying to decide whether we were going to get in the elevator and just try and avert this whole thing, or if they were going to get in and go up and just. We tried as hard as we could to, to keep the situation under wraps, and unfortunately, um, this individual would not allow that to happen. You get rolled up on pretty frequently. Thanks, guys. Thank you. All right, thanks, John.